Hey class, so I'm going to talk to you just for a few short minutes about your multi-genre project and I'm just going to review the terms that I'm using to help give you a little bit more clarity for the assignment and this project will be the overarching project for this class um, but it'll be split up into components, peer reviews, different things like that um, so that by the end it's not hopefully going to be an overwhelming thing on your plate um, but just an added um, like extra component and then polishing at the end. So I'm really looking forward to this project and uh, excited about what you come up with and also helping you along the way. So we've spent some time um, brainstorming. Each of you have done some free writes, some topics that you're interested in. I just wanna reiterate how important it is that you choose a topic you're interested in and also choose a topic that is relevant to your community or college, potentially your church. Um, and so that way it has a narrowed focus and so I'm going to share with you a short PDF and so I can make sure you I highlight the main points. It's really more for your benefit so that I do not miss what I want to say. Um, but try not to put too much on these. So I just want to define some words for you so that it's clear what I mean by a multi-genre project. I know it might sound a little intimidating, but it's not. We'll break it down and we'll go from there. So first thing, you're, you're right now, you're probably currently looking at a subject. That's what the free write was about, was for you to just, just get some thoughts on a page of some subjects you're interested in. The subject is going to be the overarching part of your research project. And you always start this with brainstorming, um, but it's really important that the subject is relevant to your life. It's in close proximity. So we talked about the inside out approach. This means that you don't just go to Google and find a topic that you're interested in, you actually look for a problem or a situation within your sphere. That could be your culture, it could be your home, it could be your college, it could be your church, it could be our campus, it could be your job. Looking at it from an inside out approach because that way, whatever research you do can have direct results and impact on your life. And really wanna showcase how research is so valuable to us, not just so that you can write a research paper in a college writing class and then know that you've been able to write a research paper. Um, even though the college research paper is important and it's a genre of writing that I appreciate and I teach, I don't think that it accurately defines, it's not always the best way that we digest research. So for example, you write a research paper in one of your classes, I don't ever go back and look at that and nor do I hand it to my best friend and say, hey, read my research paper and you're gonna learn something. No, we don't do that. It's for our professors and potentially our classmates. But for this multi-genre project, you're gonna be writing for a lot of different audiences and uh, subjects outside of our classroom are gonna be reading your work. So let's go to the next subject. Okay, purpose. I just want to reiterate that at least in the confines of my class, I want every writing assignment to have purpose. And hopefully for all of your writing assignments, they have purpose. It's really deflating when you feel like you're writing and doing a project just for the sake of writing to fulfill the requirements of a class. I mean, this is about learning. This is about change. This is about helping in some way, whether it's ourselves or somebody else. So we can never forget the why. Now I'm not saying you have to change the world through your research project. I'm not saying you have to, you know, solve all the problems of our society or universe, but at least there should be some purpose, some why behind your why, behind, you know, all this research that you're doing. And the hope is that it will, it will cause change. It will cause better understanding for the people who read it. And ultimately it will benefit your own life. So for each writing component, we reassess the purpose. Uh, what do we want to become of this project? What do we hope it's going to do? And that is so vital. Like we can't, we can't really start a writing project without that knowledge of what's the purpose? What's the point? Um, and then the other like common, um, despite common belief, writing assignments are not supposed to be superfluous. It's, I, I really um, feel like as my first year writing instructor, uh, one of my main purposes was just to teach students how to write an essay and to help them be, help it be grammatically correct. I've since realized that that doesn't really add a lot of value to a student's academic portfolio, doesn't add a lot of value to their learning. And so I'm learning over time, wow, purpose is so vital for every single writing a project and to explain that purpose to you. And then lastly, every piece of writing in college and career should have a purpose. So 
Um, you know, sometimes we write for ourselves, we journal, even, even that you can defend that it has purpose because it's helping us get out what we need to say. Um, but sometimes we write, we, we don't care what people are going to read this. And that's one thing, but for the majority of all writing assignments in college and all the writing you have to do in your career, most of the time there's a purpose behind it. There's a reason why you're writing what you're writing and what you're wanting to communicate. So we never can forget purpose. <clears throat> the second that I want to talk about, um, is genre. So the genre is the category into which a piece of writing fits. So genre is shaped by purpose, audience, and context. So we talked about purpose, and we're also going to talk a little bit about audience. When I refer to audience, it means the people that will be reading your paper. Now, for a lot of your classes, the only person reading your paper is going to be per your professor. And, you know, we know how that goes. There's an expectation and you try to meet it and hope that your professor, uh, it's what they're looking for. So we do try our best to fit that audience. But let's face it, most of the writing that we do in real life, multiple people are going to be reading our, our research, our emails, whatever, our proposals. It's going to be on multiple eyes. And so we need to learn how to write for different audiences, multiple audiences, and put ourselves in the perspective of who's going to read this and then molding our writing to uh, be empathetic to that audience, to be digestible for that audience. It's very important. Uh, we don't, we, we have to remember that there are layers to what people read in our writing. So genre is always going to be shaped by purpose, audience, and context. So uh, if I was to tell you to, you know, you're going to read it in your navigating genres. But if I was going to tell you, you know, you need to write a rap song, okay? There is a genre to rap and there's a purpose behind it. There's a specific audience and there's a context. Like there are forms and rules to rap music. Same with country music, same with, with pop music. There are certain rules that go with each context. And the same goes for writing. Writing a college research paper, the traditional college research paper, is going to have a different genre than a creative writing story or a poem or a proposal for a, uh, a project or an email. There's just different writing contexts and there are limitless numbers of genres. I mean, um, the other day I had to write, I had to write a letter for a particular scholarship. And to be honest, I was like, I don't even know what the rules are. So what did I do? I started Googling, like, what's the format? What's the genre? I don't want to present something and people think that I'm clueless on writing for a particular audience. So we do this all the time. We find mentor texts. We, we find things that we go and we think, okay, I need to shape what I'm writing to meet the criterion of this genre. That's all that it means. It's not too complex. It just means it's the way our writing, we categorize it. Sometimes we create new genres, like there's a new genre, creative nonfiction, right? It's creative storytelling, but you're writing about a nonfiction event, like a something in history. So new genres are popping up all the time, depending on our culture and what's going on. So identifying the genre of a work can tell you much about the writer's intentions and strategies. It's not like all genres have a hard cut rules, but it, um, it helps to know some of the dynamics of each genre. Uh, genres vary widely. They include critical analysis, business reports, personal narratives, works of literature, humor pieces, newspaper columns. I mean, the list goes on for different genres. And the conventions of a given genre direct a writer's choices. So in your project, you're gonna be writing different genres. So that is going to change the way you shape your research for a particular audience. A scholarly article will take on an academic tone, lay out arguments and evidence carefully, cite other published works. I mean, that's what you will see in, in a traditional research paper. But if you're, if you're creating an infographic for, say, a medical clinic, and you're presenting research on vaccines, um, the way you present that research in a visual design is going to be totally different. And so that's what um, making sure we're learning how to shape our writing to a given context. So let's talk about your multi-research genre project or multi-genre research project. I'm sorry. And um, I'm going to try to just walk you through the assignment page. There's surely going to be some questions. And I know you're still in the process of narrowing down your subject. But I want to kind of let you know what the overarching is so that it can maybe relieve some stress and also give you a little bit more focus for the direction I want you to go in. Um, in, in our individual conferences, I'll have a chance to brainstorm with you. 
But this week, just know you're going to need to start doing some initial research and you'll need to have a proposal ready by Sunday. So that proposal is going to be your project for this week. You won't have a summer response. So just keep that in mind. So your multi-genre research project will focus on the same subject. It's going to be, it's not like you're going to jump topics from each genre. I'm going to have you look at one subject and using multiple genres of writing, meaning that you're gonna be uh, doing multiple audiences with multiple purposes for each different genre that you choose. So research writing is not a cookie cutter approach. It's not like research can only be confined to the traditional research essay. There are many ways that we use research, even on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we Google information, we, we go and do observations, we go to Amazon to review what other people have said about a product. I mean, these are just very simple ways that we research. In this class, you're gonna be diving into just more developed research and then potentially doing some primary research projects of your own. So I wanna dive specifically into your project, try not to keep you too long, but want to make sure um, I'm giving you the tools to be successful in this paper. So the writing project itself, we've already done some brainstorming, but just this is the idea. For this project, you will consider an issue or problem that's relevant to our classroom, college, or community you feel needs to be addressed. This can be an issue you're finding in your church. It can be an issue you're finding at your job. It can be an issue you're finding in our culture. It can be an issue you're finding in our classroom. It just needs to be it needs to be something that you have come in contact with. It shouldn't be, again, a controversial subject from the internet. It should not be that. It needs to be narrowed enough that we can implement our research. So once you've chosen a subject, you'll spend time finding credible articles and data surrounding the subject for the majority of this course. So once you start choosing your subject and diving into it, it doesn't go away. And then you're going to be think about ways you can educate a target audience on this issue and persuade them to make a better decision or be involved in creating change. So these are some keys to being successful for this project. The key to success in this project is choosing a relevant subject and narrowing its focus. This project is meant to have real life effects. For example, if your project involves research about our college campus, we will work to publish your findings in an, for an appropriate audience. For example, you write a persuasive letter that says, hey, we should be doing this on our college campus. I want that letter to get in the hands of Bob and Daryl and our administrative team. Or if you decide, you know what, um, I really wanna focus on an uh, aspect of my job, like maybe um, uh, employee retention. You wanna, you're wondering like, why is it that people just keep quitting my job? What could we be doing better at my job in a business aspect? Um, the hope is that you can publish your findings or use your findings to help better your workspace. Or in this case, if your work is in a place where you feel you can do that, it could be a, a personal medical, it could be um, a personal church related. There's a lot of creative room. There's a lot of creative room. So there are going to be some parts of this multi-genre project that are more traditional. One of them is... Um, uh, well, first, let me tell you what the four components of different genres you're going to be doing. So the first is an annotated reference list. This is more traditional, where I want to see that you've done as much research as you possibly can on a given subject. And I'm going to break this down for each lesson. Um, the second is you're going to be doing an actual narrative story. So you're going to be taking all this research that you've collected, and then you're going to make it real for us. You're going to give us, uh, you're going to create a work of Basically, it can be based on nonfiction or it can be fiction, whatever it is to give us a real life example, narrative story about the situation. And then you're going to create an argument of infographics. So this is where you will, you will take your research and you will create an argument, um, persuading an audience to make a certain particular change or give them a better understanding. And this is where you put your data into a visual graphic. And then lastly, you will either do a persuasive letter or proposal. Um, to a given organization to implement your research. So these are just four different genres and each of them are gonna look very different. Um, the following components are gonna be required that are a little bit more traditional. So one is a research proposal and sources, which I give information on the lesson on what I'm expecting and this is due Sunday night. You will have peer reviews for each genre assignment. So each of these four components will be peer reviewed. So you'll be looking at each other's work um, and then lastly, you will have an online self-assessment and self-reflection. 
on the, the majority of this project and the, the process that you've gone through in creating these different writing. Um, the final infographic, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then I have some helpful resources back here. So I'm going to be working with you this week in our conferences to help you narrow down your subject. But this is what your multi-genre research project is going to look like. There's not going to be a traditional research essay, but it is going to be a great way to implement sources and to educate given audiences on the why and the purpose of all your research. So I'm really looking forward to this project. Um, I'm sure there'll be some messy parts. I'm sure there'll be things that you have to learn, but that's okay. That's all part of the writing process. As long as you do your best and do the hard work of finding a subject that interests you and it's doable within the context of the semester, you're gonna do just fine. So thank you so much for listening. Please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon. If you haven't scheduled an appointment for this week, please do so, and I will talk to you soon.